Hi everybody, Kathy here. Uh, welcome to my studio. And today I'm working with pan pastels because I had somebody ask me if I can apply, apply the method that I teach uh, in pastel format. To which I replied, yes, you can. So I'm going to take one of my uh, paintings that I did. Just need to find it. I am still here, just a bit further away. Um, I just want to get hold of one of the pieces of work that I did, and we're going to. This was one that I did some time ago, and I'm just going to do the basic thing. So first up is step one, which is the sketch. So I'm going to sketch that out. Now we have various tools for using this particular um, these particular type of pastels, and these are pan pastels that I'm using. Uh, to show you one set. Now I've got all 80 of the pastel colors in the range. Um, so I'm going to start off by doing my, my sketch. So I'm going to use a, let me use a, a light tone for this. It may not show up particularly well on the video and I'm going to start now this is showing in reverse because I had to turn to see if I can change this again change this view uh, sorry about this I just need to Get this sorted out. Okay, right now we're right way, right way around. Um, so I'll be starting on this side and then moving across to the other side. So uh, in this, in this piece, I've got the mountains in the background. That furthest point there would be my horizon line. So I'm going to start by putting in. Yep. Let's just get that out of the way. I start by putting in those that horizon line in the back, and that's going to be at about that point there. So I'm going to sketch that in. It's running through there. I've got so that's my horizon line coming through there, and then I'm going to sketch in where well, I'm going to have my trees. So I've got one that sits here. It's just a tad further back. Then I've got a bigger, bigger tree that runs through from the top. And that Down there, I've got another tree behind that. At this stage, just a sketch that I'm getting in here. Um, then we're going to go across to the, the, the trees at the background here. So the trees in here. Uh, I'm not going to put in the base part, just putting in, working in these these areas here, and I'm changing it a bit. Okay, so that's the one side. 
then I've got mountains coming out here about that point and that one comes up a bit we'll just change the shape a bit and that runs down in the foreground here and then bring that down there and then we've got trees coming through to the final tree that stands on the right hand side so those trees a bit later on, I'm not too worried about those ones. We've got this little trees here. Okay, and then we've got this big one. It comes to on this side. disappear behind things there. Then we've got a road that comes out from this area. So we're starting off small, come out. Starting off narrow, coming as it comes closer, getting wider. Okay, we'll just make that into something a little bit smaller there. And then we've got fence that runs along this place. Like, like that. Okay, then we've got bushes and things here on the side of the road. We'll get to that. And then I've brought in the shadows that run down a bit of a hill here. Um, a bit of a hill. Not a hill, but just part that goes up from the road. Okay, so that is my sketch. The next thing to do is to block in. Oh, we just need to get these trees sorted out here quickly. That would help, wouldn't it? So, a bit of mountain through there as well. And scribble in some trees here. And that will be behind that main tree there. And that all comes down to the bottom here. Okay, so we've set the scene. And now we need to work on blocking in, and we're going to start with um, the what we call the darker colors. But in pastel case, we're going to work with the lightest colors in order to, but still maintaining a value structure in order to uh, convey aerial perspective. So for that, I'm going to go over to bigger. Um, for want of a better word, brushes, which actually are sponges. And um, what I'm going to do first, believe it or not, is I'm actually going to put it in the sky because of what I'm going to do at a later stage to the trees and things in this area. So my sky is going to go on first, and working on the sky also in perspective. We start with the darkest color at the top. Okay, let me just take out my, that's my darkest. I put in a little bit of, uh, what is this? They say ultramarine blue tint. That is thalo blue. And this is another thalo blue tint. But that is my ultramarine there. So, I'm going to use these and white, and I have a blender as well, which is also looks white, which I'm going to use in the sky. So, with the sky, we're going to start darkest to lightest, okay? So, 
load it up and put in those colors. Now these colors are actually pretty transparent. That is the beauty of these pen pastels. And yes, you have to put on quite a bit of layering in order to build up that color. As with other pastels as well, you need to build up the, the color that you're going to be uh, putting down on your canvas. In this case, I'm using rice paper and it's on the um, rough side. Um, this paper has two sides. One side is, um, I wouldn't say a waxy feel, but it's a, it's a, um, a smooth feel to it. So I'm working in that ultramarine tint into the phthalo blue, which is going to just change that sky into a more workable finished tone that gives the impression of hint of clouds I'm not too worried about working around the trees here and um, yeah you have to you have to pull this right through I can use a bigger um, applicator and, or soft what they call soft tools I can use a, a larger one white into that now if you're doing this in acrylic you need to uh, work from your dark to your light and the sky wouldn't be the first thing that you put down okay. in this case I need to put it down first because I'm going to put dark over the top of this. And um, you'll be defeating the object a bit of getting, although you can work from. Uh, I have done dark to light with the pastels already. But I'm not too worried about those great smudges that are happening as well because that's going to be covered up with foliage so I'm just getting getting that in and then I use tissue paper to wipe it off which I need to grab it yeah this is just a quick demonstration and that's why I'm using um, the rice paper here, um, otherwise I'm going to be working forever, well not forever, I'm going to be working quite a bit um, harder when it comes to the uh, application on uh, canvas and I use the, uh, um, yesterday I used the canvas panel and before that for some of my other seascapes that I've done recently I used um, a canvas pad. I'm just getting in some atmosphere into that sky. Remember that the closer it is to us, the darker it will it will be. So don't lose all that dark at the top. Okay. Now this is a very quick. Uh, sky that I've put in there and um, I'm going to why this looks so washed out today anyway. uh, right that um, concludes the 
blue. So I'm going to put the blue back again. And we're going to move on to the this area. I'm not worried about my trees yet, because the trees would be the darkest area. And I want to put in the darks for this tree line here, and then also work on the mountain at the back, and then this area in front here that we need to work on as well. So my sky is set up. The light is being at the bottom, so that we get that aerial perspective in there. I kept the white here, and I want to go with my greens. I need to get my greens out. Uh, here. These are the green. Well, this is the green colored tray. There are 20 in a tray, 80 colors all together. So I'm going to be working with these greens here today. Uh, see if I can get this and just put it on the side here. I'm not going to be able to see everything. I want that white. Must stay. And now I need my greens. So I'm going to start off on this side. Side's done. Come over to this side now. I think I'm going to leave the mountain open over there. Where in my original, I um, did put more foliage in on that side. We'll just see how it goes. Uh, yeah, so let's get these. area in here. And I'm just doing a very, very, very quick blocking. Um, but I'll be working a lot slower if I was doing this as a as a main study. Okay, so um, Get some more darks into this this side here. Being a bit so cool. So let's just get some darker tone into this. And you can actually get some really interesting shapes, believe it or not, with a square edge. Um, yeah, the other shape is this, this one here with a triangular head. I've got a big applicator like that, which is also, it's a rectangle shape, but angular. And this large one here. And I've got a few more in various small ones as well. 
and then there's this chopped oval as well. And I mainly use these two and there's the two triangular ones that I use as well. Um, there are other tools like these and this one I haven't got the end on it but it's a triangular end and they can be washed and then they have to dry thoroughly before using it again um, so yeah just need to bear that in mind and um, and I want to set this tone here the values into the road and the uh, although I can go to the mountains but I want to work on this area in the front here I'm going to go with a yellow and green on this one put it a yellow and greeny kind of field on this side I still got black on this applicator as well. So, and I will lighten that rear area up there. The middle ground there needs to be lightened. I need to get my glasses off. So I've mixed this with my, this is actually my, uh, this was my black and brown applicator, but this is the brown one, then I've mixed this with anyway, we'll lift that color, we get this because we're going to be working on this side and as we're painting as well vary the brush strokes because here your direction is going to come down and down to the roadside so vary those those strokes bring in the tree shadows again and in the trees as well. Uh, we'll get there. But the main reason for the video is to show you that the same method can be applied here. Three steps. Okay, not three brushes three steps to finishing a piece of work. much dust as if you were working with uh, real pastel so and I work on this black felt black piece of felt which is actually 
for my Chinese ink ink whip. Okay, so right, uh, it's not hundred percent here, but this is my blocking end stage, and the colours are more or less where I want them to be. Now I want to move on to the mountain, the background there, and I'm going to go with. Uh, I'm going to go with. same time that I'm doing this I see the paper is giving me a nice texture on this so I've used a light grey there and it comes slightly, slightly darker on this front front one's the dead mountain at the back its back. Now the other thing that I do use is I use uh, baking paper so that I can work on here without smudging. The rest of the of work. them to tell us that they are here. Don't know who it is. Anyway. Somebody with a new toy called the Hooter.
Okay, so I don't want to go into any more, more detail on that part there. Um, because that's not part of this, it's supposed to be blocking in. And the next piece that we're going to go into is the road here. So I'm going to pick up my earth tones. And there are quite a few of them as well, 20 altogether. Starting from white all the way through to um, brown. And I'm going to put in the lightest of those. road section and then work in the other colors as we go. Sienna. So this is burnt sienna and looks more like pink, but that's not an issue because it is a specific color I want up near the front here, and it's a lot redder than what I've used at the back. This one is raw umber tint. So, okay, what I've done is I've set up the value scale. I'm not 100% happy with here, with this area, but it's going to get blocked, well, not blocked in, it's going to get the details in here um, when I carry on. So, yes, the method can be used on in this medium as well. Um, this video is already 33 minutes so I just wanted to keep it as short as possible. Um, what do we do next is to put in the uh, put in the trees and I may use um, my pastels for this and move over to my red and yellow red tone palette colors which is this one here uh, let's just get it under there okay so these are um, what I'm going to use next and that will establish my trees and then I will probably use pastel to finish off oops, to finish off the piece in other words detailing etc uh, on, on this so what I want to do is I want to get in the tree I'm going to pull in the tree over here and sketch in the tree here. The tree comes down behind foliage that's going to be here. So we'll just get that, that in. And we've got a tree that sits over here and comes all the way down to area so I'm not too worried about anything else showing through there because trees have varying colors in them and
I'll be working on that in detailing in building up each tree. Okay, so folks, I hope that gives you an idea of how I go about doing the Moy method, which is the method that I teach, um, certified to teach it. And this is how I use it um, in the pastels. You may have a different method. I, this is the method that I teach, and I, I enjoy doing it this way. Um, I hope you, you got some information off that. Um, I hope you can use it. Um, so that's the way I get started. Um, so that's basically the blocking done. I then come back and build up some clouds. I don't know if I want to build up any clouds here. I've got a nice layer that's running through there. I will put in, if we come to this, I'm going to, there are clouds in the sky and there's, uh, this is kind of like an evening, morning setting. Um, I'm going to work here, so where that black is, I'm not too worried about that. Um, trees need to get highlights on them. And then obviously the side we need to work on the the, the lights and the darks uh, further and that all comes in detailing. Um, I'm going to do this as if the sun is basically uh, up already and not as a morning and not as a morning or early morning or evening um, uh, piece of work. So yeah it's just a practice piece for me. Um, I hope you enjoyed that from me Cappy. Um, stay safe. Keep arting. Have a great day. Cheers.